Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and it's that time of year again. It is the Sephora Spring Savings event. So I'm going to be giving you my recommendations with swatches, with cutaways, with reviews across makeup, skincare, hair care, body care, and fragrance. And I'm extra excited because this video is in partnership with Sephora where I have been shopping for what, 15 years or something, 15 plus years. So this is kind of a dream to work with them as a content creator. So thank you to Sephora for sponsoring this video. So here's the key info. The Spring Savings event begins today, April 1st, for Rouge members and also for everyone to get access to 30% off of the Sephora collection. VIB get 15% off from April 4th to April 11th, and insiders get 10% off from April 7th to April 11th. You can use the code Save Spring an unlimited number of times throughout the duration of the event. And if you're not a member of Sephora's Beauty Insider program, you can join. I will link it below in the description box along with everything else. So let's get into the good stuff. When I was thinking about the recommendations video this time around, I really wanted to focus on things that I'm actually using, things that I might consider active on my roster of products. I have created a lot of content around previous Sephora events with my all-time favorites that are very expansive and kind of encyclopedic. So I will link those in the description box and you can also find them on my blog, on my channel. But this time, because we're covering so many categories, I really wanna be edited and tight and tell you about the things that I am consistently using right now. Let's start with makeup. I'm going to talk about primers. So first up, I have the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. So this is a gripping spray that can be used either before or over makeup for longevity, for um, nice looking skin. It gives you a really kind of glassy skin look. Personally, as someone with oily skin, I actually like this before I apply my makeup. I find that it's a little bit more lightweight than a traditional primer per se, but it also also helps create that um, grippy base for makeup to go on top and I just prefer that for myself. Next I've got the In Beauty Project Face Glaze. I just reviewed this two videos ago. So I had a new at Sephora video and I can already tell I am loving this. I've used it several times already. I used it today. I'll show you that in the cutaway. This is a glowy primer that has a gel cream consistency. It has a little bit of grip to it and it also has slight glowy iridescence. It's not what I would call a liquid highlighter. It is more of a glowy primer. It doesn't have um, an oily texture to it. It's something that I can sort of blend out onto the skin with my fingers, and then it sort of sets the way like, it, it goes into the skin the way a moisturizer would, but it doesn't leave a tacky residue behind. The glow itself is very natural. It doesn't look like highlighter. It just looks like you have glassy, glossy skin. Moving into base products, I have the Tower 28 Sunny Days Tinted Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So this is a mineral SPF that is tinted, and it is one of truly one of the only tinted mineral SPFs that I've ever really, really loved. It doesn't feel chalky at all. It has a really nice spreadable texture and the shade range is incredible. To me, this is more of a makeup product with SPF than an SPF on its own. I would always apply this on top of my regular SPF, but I do like that extra protection. I know going into spring and summer months, we're looking for that extra SPF coverage. And I also find that it's very skin-like. It has more coverage than you might think. It's buildable to like a medium, but it's the kind of thing that anyone can apply. And I even wear this on days where I'm not wearing other makeup and it doesn't look heavy or cakey on the skin. It just has a beautiful skin-like finish. And I think it's a great product. It's also great for sensitive skins and it's approved by the National Eczema Association. For one step up from that, I have the Fenty Ease Drop. This is a blurring skin tint that I think has a medium coverage. It is 
very fluid, it's spreadable, it's thin. But for me, it creates a really nice like veil kind of over the pores. It has that blurring, self-setting sort of quality. And for my skin type as someone with combo skin getting oilier as the, war the weather warms up, it's perfect for me. It's something I can't really even feel on my skin and yet it gives me coverage where I want it. It blurs over pores, it covers redness. And of course it's Fenty, so the shade range is great. I wear the shade nine in the eavesdrop and I forgot to mention I wear the shade 30 PCH in the Tower 28. I know there's been an explosion of new foundations new base products at Sephora, but my all-time favorite, my go-to tried and true, remains the Dior Backstage Foundation. It's fluid, it's adjustable, it's super flexible, it's stretchy, it's skin-like, I'm wearing it today. I can wear it on low makeup, natural makeup days, or I have even worn this to events, and it just wears beautifully. It's a long wear foundation on me. It has a slightly self-setting quality to it that makes it great for long wear days, especially going into summer if you have oily skin, that that kind of breaks up foundation really easily. This might be something to try. I can blend it out with fingers. It looks beautiful with a brush. It looks great with a sponge. For me, this is just my fail safe, always have on hand go-to foundation. And I wear the shade Two Warm Olive, which is the best match I have of all of my base products, I think. The cousin to that, moving into concealers, is the new Dior Backstage Concealer, which just came out um, a couple of weeks ago. I have the shade 2W. This concealer is I think has replaced my all-time favorite, which is the Armani Power Fabric. I love that too, but there's something about this that is just making me want to, to grab for it over and over and over. So it is a high coverage concealer. It comes in the silicone plastic packaging that matches the foundation. Look at this applicator. It is a tiny brush and it's like a sort of flat paddle brush that makes application so easy. It helps you get into the corners around the eyes and because it doesn't pick up a ton of product, you're able to spread out that product without over applying your concealer. The other thing I love is that it has a lot of flexibility. So even just a little bit of concealer stretches across the under eye very, very well without losing pigmentation, without losing coverage. It has, to me, a sort of skin-like, creamy quality that does set down well with powder, but it also looks really great on its own. And it wears all day long. It does not sink into lines. It has this way of smoothing out the appearance of the under eye and smoothing out the appearance of any potential texture under the eye. For blemishes, I always turn to the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. This is another long time like go-to product for me. I have the shade Custard here. I've used it a ton. It's kind of gross as you can tell, but it's the sign of something very well loved. And then in the summer, I have Ginger. It's called the Soft Matte Concealer, but to me, it just takes on the texture of whatever you apply this on top of. So if you have a glowier base and you apply this, it kind of melts into that base that you already have down. I love this to apply with fingers. You can also take a pinpoint concealer brush. I used both of those methods today. You could even use a fluffy brush and kind of swirl it around the pot and whisk it around the face for like a light veil of coverage. It's very much a utilitarian kind of product for when you need coverage, but you don't want it to look like you have a lot of product on. For powders, I don't actually have a loose powder or a translucent powder that is my go-to right now. I've just been kind of rotating, but I do have a pressed powder that I've been loving. This is the Dior Backstage Powder. If you can't tell, I love the Dior Backstage line. I think the quality of the products is beautiful. So this is a pressed powder that is lightly, lightly tinted. I have the shade 2N. So this is a a baked gelée formula. It's not like a pressed formula. It's obviously not a loose formula. And this is the creamiest powder I have ever tried. It has this way of setting your makeup, but making the skin look creamy. I don't know how else to say it. I actually love this for setting the under eye. It sets your under eye concealer without making you look super matte. I also sometimes even take my finger 
into the powder because it is so creamy and I'll tap on certain areas. And this comes in many different shades from light to deep as do all of the base products that I have mentioned. All right, let's get into cheek products starting with cream blush. This was the hardest category for me to narrow down because I love cream blush. It's a category in which I allow myself to be quite promiscuous. But here's one that is a more recent love. This is the Rose Ink Cream Blush. It's actually the lip and cheek color, and I have the shade Azalea. This is a really interesting texture. It's kind of on the slightly like thicker, balmier side, but it's not oily or greasy. So I like to apply this with a brush. I just take it into the pan and then like tap it onto my cheeks. And even though it's thick in the pan, it actually creates a really even wash of color across the cheeks. And it's very adjustable in coverage, like you can go for a really natural look or if you want something a bit more built up, you can do that without the blush getting patchy. This is the shade Azalea, which has been a great like winter, wintry flush for me. I think I may pick this up in another shade. I have my eye on Heliotrope or Foxglove going into summer. Those are the more like corally, peachy shades, which I love. So yeah, something I've really been enjoying. It's a beautiful formula. Next, I have the Tower 28 Beach Please blushes, the cream blushes. So I have the shade Magic Hour, which is kind of like a warm, beigey peach on my skin tone. They have a great shade curation of these. They have a slightly more like orangey and like burnt orange one that I've had my eye on. This is a great formula, I think especially if you have dry to normal skin. It is one that stays slightly, not sticky, but a little bit um, tacky, I guess, on the cheeks. Not enough so that your hair sticks to your cheeks or anything, but it, it remains kind of glowy on the cheeks. Even though this is a balmier blush, I actually find it's really long lasting. I think because it has that slightly grippy quality, um, again, not sticky, but a little bit grippy, it actually helps the blush wear longer throughout the day. Then I have a few liquid blushes, well, liquid cheek products in general. These are kind of multi-use products. These are the Danessa Myricks Vision Flushes. And these are a liquid product that you can use on the cheeks, on the eyes, on the lips. Personally, I like them on the cheeks best. That's true actually with all of the cream blushes that I just shared, but these are my favorite shades. So the longtime favorite that I have is Ballet Slippers. This is the most true blushy shade I have, and this one is very, very pigmented. I dot this on the back of my hand dab a brush into it and then dab it onto the cheeks. If you go directly onto the cheeks with this shade, it might be a lot, but it's this beautiful like burnt coral shade. So beautiful for spring and summer. And if you have oily skin, but you want to try creamy cheek products, this is the formula for you. It sets down it does not budge at all. I just tested a new shade called Nutcracker, which is a very cool taupey rose caramel shade. It's unlike anything else that I have, actually. This shade in particular is a little bit more sheer. I think you can see than ballet slippers. And I wore it as like a contour blush, but I've also since then worn it on the eyes. I've worn it across my cheeks. I've even sculpted around my forehead with it. And it's a really unique kind of versatile shade. The last shade that I have is Tiara, which is actually like a highlighter shade. And it's like a champagne peachy champagne, which looks like that. It's got high shine, but it's something you can sheer out, or if you want a really blingy highlighter, you can do that too. My other favorite liquid highlighter is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I've had this forever. There's just really nothing that has replaced this for me. It's a tinted glowy product right there. You can see Tiara is much lighter and blingier. This is Flawless Filter shade number four, which has a really nice olive 
undertone. For me, this is something that's so multifunctional. I almost always wear it as a glowy primer underneath foundation. That doesn't look like you're wearing highlighter, but just bounces light when you're moving your face or if you happen to catch the light at the right angle, this is the product for you. As for cream bronzer, there are others I have tried, but I continue to come back to the Fenty cream bronzer in the shade Macchiato. For me, okay, mine is disgusting. Don't judge me. It's the sign of a well-loved product. For me, the tone of this is perfect. It has that like golden caramel, but neutral undertone. So for me, this is something I can use to slightly sculpt as well as to bronze bronze and that yellow undertone especially for my skin tone looks very natural for me I just take a brush in here I smack it in there I blend it across the cheeks and it's so skin like and just easy to use Moving from cream to powders, I have creme and powder duos from Patrick Ta. These are not new, but there are new shades and they're also new to me. I've come to acquire three of them in the last like three months, but I love them all. So the first one that I got was She's So LA, which is one of the older shades. If you're not familiar with these, this is a cream, this is a powder. She's So LA is definitely the most orangey. It's got this kind of like tan rose kind of quality to it. Then I've got two of the newer shades. This one is She's Blushing, which is the most classic rose blush that I have. So this is She's Blushing, this is She's So LA. And then I just reviewed the new shade She's Baked, which is a really beautiful like burnt terracotta, burnt red kind of shade. This is She's So LA. This is She's Baked, and this is She's Blushing. I recognize this is not my best swatch work, but here we go. This is She's Blushing on top, those two, and then we've got She's So LA in the middle, and then we've got She's Baked on the outside. So you can see they sort of range from light to deep, and there are different undertones there as well. I only have one other powder cheek product, and this is what I would file under looks boring, but you use it all the time. So this is the Laura Mercier blush in the shade Fresco. It's very like a very neutral tan rose. It's the kind of blush that goes with any any kind of makeup look, and it also doesn't look like you're wearing blush. So if you're someone that's afraid to wear blush, afraid to wear brighter pops of color on the cheeks, but you do want some definition, some liveliness in the face, this is a great option, and the, the powder is so refined and smooth across the skin. Moving into eyeshadows, let's start with eyeshadow singles. So I just picked this up recently. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in the shade Walk of No Shame. I I like this formula, but what really drew me to this was the shade. This is a beautiful kind of rusty copper. So this is a swatch of it. Look how smooth and just, oh, it's so pretty. It's got that like pearly sheen running through it. It's something that you can really, really sheer out on the edges like that, or you can build up in pigmentation. And I just thought this shade would be so beautiful, kind of just blended out all over the eyes throughout spring and summer. This is the kind of formula that anyone could blend out with fingers or with a brush. Then I've got some long, long, long time favorites, but I have to mention them because they're so good and they always sell out. These are the Tom Ford Cream and Powder Eye Duos. I have two shades. The first is Golden Peach, which has this beautiful, like pink, shimmery, moussey whipped color. And on top, it has a pressed powder. So this is a beautiful, like twinkly pressed eyeshadow. Then I've got the shade Naked Bronze, which has that beautiful bronzy cream shadow. And then on top, this one has a slightly topier eyeshadow. So the cream formula on these is actually very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte Tilbury was actually the creative director at Tom Ford Beauty when 
these were developed. So let me swatch these for you. They have a very similar whipped, moussey feel. The pigments are stunning. They have a pearlescence to them. The powder shadows on these are very much um, toppers. They don't have a lot of pigment. They're a mostly transparent base, but they have this like beautiful twinkly quality. So here are the swatches. There's naked bronze with the shimmer here. It's a more like golden taupey shimmer. And then I have um, gold golden peach with that warmer champagne, slightly peachy shimmer. So you can see what I mean about the shimmers. There's not a lot of base color, but they have a beautiful kind of wet looking twinkly quality to them. The Tom Ford duos especially are pricey for a duo, which is where that savings will go a really long way, especially if you have that 20% off. It does make a big difference here. Speaking of Tom Ford, I've got two of his quads. I recommend all of his eyeshadows. I think the the quality, the formula is so stunning. And again, that savings will take you a really long way. My old favorite is the Honeymoon Quad. This is actually a new quad. I've got, I had an older one and then a newer one came into my life and I replaced it. But it's a formula and a color story that I've loved for a very long time. So this is a baked gelée formula. It's so smooth across the eye. So here's Honeymoon Swatched. I think even on the hand you can see how smooth and just buttery and pearly these eyeshadows are. The other one that I have is new to the Tom Ford line. It's the Eye Color Quad Creme, which is a new formula. It's a creme to powder formula. And I have the Color Story Tiger's Eye. There are three color stories in this formula. There are many, many color stories in the Powder Quad formula. But this is um, Tiger Eye, which is all shimmer shades. This is unlike any other eyeshadow formula I've tried. It's creamy in the pan, it's creamy to touch, but the formula itself is so thin somehow. So here is Tiger Eye Swatched. It's the kind of thing that I think I'm going to wear all spring and summer long. It's such a buttery, soft, smooth, finish across the eye and I'm really excited about this formula. Another longtime favorite small format eyeshadow is the Dior Quince. These are so underrated. They come in a variety of color stories. The one I have is Mitza, which is obviously warm tones, but they come in all different color stories, more neutral, more cool, pinky, blue, purple. These shadows are so sophisticated. They're so smooth. They're velvety smooth. They're super pigmented. That's one finger swatch. And I think they're really underrated. So this is Mitza swatched. Those are all like just one or two passovers with the swatches. Okay, I had to take off the jacket because we're getting hot and heavy in here. When it comes to large format eyeshadow palettes and that savings going a long way, I would spend my money on either Pat McGrath or Natasha Denona. These are formulas and shadows that I'm sure you're all familiar with because they've been around a while, but I'll just tell you my favorites really quickly. For Natasha Denona, Biba is just that girl. She's probably my most used palette. I have everything I need in terms of sculpting, contouring, creating a base for any kind of eye look, even if it's a more colorful eye look. There's a mix of shimmers, of mattes and satins, as well as her creamy matte formula, which I love. And if you're someone that likes neutral eyeshadows, especially warm neutrals, this is just one that I cannot beat. And if you like cooler tone neutrals, the Glam palette I think would be great for you. I also love the midi size palettes. These are $65 compared to the 129. This one is the bronze palette, which again, so speaks to me. This is one of my favorite palettes for warm weather. If you're going on like a tropical vacation or you just want to summon that golden goddess vibe, this is the one. And then when it comes to Pat McGrath, obviously all of the motherships are amazing. My two favorite favorites are Utopian Dream and Bronze Seduction. Utopian Dream looks like this. It has these pops of colors, but it also has a lot of like rosy neutrals here that I actually find I can do everyday looks with as well as like those bronzes in the middle. 
and bronze seduction of course has the bronzes the six over here and of course there are her special shades which can only be found in her mothership palettes which are out of this world so here are some special shade swatches so these two are from bronze seduction this is a trio chrome from Utopian Dream and this is one of the special shades from Utopian Dream too. So I just wanted to show you these because these are the shadows that are not found in anywhere else but the Mothership palettes, which are the big palettes, which is where you will see the most savings if you do buy those palettes. For mascara, I have three that I'm really loving right now. This is the Rare Beauty Mascara. Mine is disgusting, it's a mini. I need to get rid of it, I've had it forever. But it is a great mascara for an all-rounder. It doesn't smudge, it lifts, the formula super black, it's volumizing, it's lengthening, it does everything I want. I think it's fantastic. I've also been loving the new Milk Makeup Rise Mascara. This one is great for if you like a fluttery, fanned out lash. It has a curved wand with bristles and it helps separate while adding volume. So it creates what I would call a kind of clean volume sort of look. And the last one is the newest one to me, the Bare Minerals Maximist, which is what I'm wearing today. This creates serious lift and length. I feel like it lengthens really, really quickly without having to add a lot of coats. This one has a huge brush. The brush is a little bit too big for me, but I wanna show it to you because you can see how much space there is between the bristles, and I think that's what helps create that length and lift. Oh, I also just remembered the Merit Clean Mascara. I have to include this now because it is my perfect everyday mascara. It's a tubing mascara. It's not gonna give you a ton of drama, but it gives you some separation. It gives you a fluttery lash look. It lengthens and it's tubing, so it's really easy to remove with just warm water at the end of the day. It doesn't smudge. It's just a great day-to-day -day mascara that is super reliable and not too overwhelming. You don't have to think too hard when you're applying it. I'm very much a creature of habit when it comes to eyeliner, so I have my Urban Decay 24-7 liners, but I actually think these two shades are really great if you have brown eyes. They're great because they are softer than black, so this is Whiskey, which is this brown. It has um, a bit of warmth to it that opens up the eye, and then this is the shade Alkaline, which is a kind of plummy red, and that also brings out um, any brown tones that you have in your eyes. So these are both great for, oops, <laughs> for a smudged out look, for a more precise line, whatever you're going for, these are going to last and they don't smudge. Moving into lips, I have lip liner and a longtime favorite. This is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Anywhere Caffeine. It's my perfect brownie nude. It looks like this. I also have the shade Endless Cacao, which is a great um, sculpting shade for the lips. It's a very cool toned taupey brown, but I can't find it. I mean, it's a testament to how much I love it. I use it all the time, so it's floating around somewhere. I also love this line because there is a nude lip shade for every skin tone. If you like a warmer undertone, a cooler, a neutral, something rosy or something brown, there really is a tone for every skin tone. So if you've struggled to find your perfect nude liner, I would look in the Artist Color Pencil line from Makeup Forever. Then I've got lip oils, glosses, things that can be applied with a doe foot applicator. First up is the beloved Dior Lip Glow Oil. I just love the chubby applicator on this thing. Look how cute that is, it's so cushiony. This is called an oil and it has the moisturizing qualities of an oil, but I think it's more of a gloss feeling. This is the original shade pink. I mean, you're not even gonna be able to see it, it's clear but they also have different tinted versions of this. I've wanted the shade Mahogany Forever, it's been sold out, but there are other beautiful shades in this formula. On the slippier side, I have the Tower 28 Shine On Lip Jellies. I have a couple of shades. This is the shade Magic, which is just clear with a bit of shimmer, and this is the shade Spicy, which is a really fun like cherry red. These feel 
much more like a jelly, a gel. They don't have the grippiness or the stickiness of a gloss, but they are also hydrating and nourishing, and there are a lot of different shades in this formula that are beautiful. So that's Magic, which has a bit of like golden shimmer, and this is the shade Spicy which is much more pigmented, and that's a great like cherry red for summer. To round out the doe foot lip category, I have the Merit Lip Oils, which I like so much that I have five shades of them. This is a tinted oil that has a bit of slip. It's not sticky, but it's also not gonna move around on the lips. So here are the swatches. So this is Eau Naturelle, Marrakesh, Cara Cara, Taupe, and Falcon. My two favorite shades are Marrakesh, the second one, and Cara Cara, the middle one. Merit has been knocking it out of the ballpark with their lip releases, and this is their latest release. This is their signature lipstick. So moving more into bullet lip formulas. So this is like a step up from their lip oils. This is a lightweight lipstick that has a satiny finish, but it's not also super opaque. It actually has like a transparency to it that feels less like of a commitment than a full on pigmented lipstick. I have the shade Slip, which is a warm nude, warm brownie nude. And then the shade Cabo, which is an orangey red. It is a bit more pigmented, I think, than Slip. I just think this is the kind of lipstick formula that anyone can wear, even if you're afraid of wearing lipstick. It's, it's akin to like a tinted lip balm, but it has the more sophisticated finish of a lipstick. It doesn't move around. It has that natural skin-like finish and the shade curation is stunning. I'm actually considering picking up a couple more of these myself. Then I have some of my all-time favorite lipsticks, my Gucci lipsticks in four different formulas. The first and probably my current favorite formula is the Shine formula. It's the Rouge de Brillant formula. The one I'm wearing right now is the shade Goldie Red, which is their signature red. I could actually use a top up. So this is a shiny, balmy, kind of melty formula. It's the only lipstick formula that comes with their slim tube. And you can feel it kind of melt onto the lips. I have this paired right now with the Anywhere Caffeine Makeup Forever lip liner. I also have the shade My Cousin Rachel, which is one of my favorites. It's just a beautiful like peachy pink. I've also got the Sheer formula. So this is more of a sheer, slightly waxy formula. This is Agatha Orange. It looks really bright, I know, but because it's in that sheer formula, it's not as intense. Then we have the Satin formula, which is creamy, but still very thin. It does have more pigmentation, but it has um, a really nice glide across the lips. And I have the shade Penny Beige right here. And lastly, I have the matte formula in the shade um, they met in Argentina, which is so fun. This is definitely high, high pigment. And it's this bright rose, rose with like a touch of coral. So I have my cousin Rachel, Goldie Red. Those are in the Rouge de Brillant. This is the sheer in Agatha Orange satin in penny beige and the matte in they met in argentina and then finishing off with sheer tinted balms i have the dior lip glow in the shade mahogany again just tested this recently but i have always loved this formula mahogany is a kind of brownie rose tawny rose sort of shade it pulls a little bit pinker on my lips but it's the kind of thing you can wear without makeup or with makeup and the summer fridays lip butter balm i have the shade vanilla beige which is a brownie rose and i even use this to prep my lips before makeup because it has a really nice moisturizing quality to it to round out the makeup category i have two tools that i want to talk about the first is the sephora collection brushes i think they make Make excellent brushes they're synthetic high quality and you get 30% off no matter what Sephora tier you are during the event um, this is the brush number 56 it's a great brush for foundation which is how it was designed but I actually like this to apply cream cheek products I use this to apply my cream blush today and it's a great little size it is pinched 
but it has this like fluffiness and it's really soft. It also comes in the Sephora Collection Pro six piece brush set, which I will put a picture of here. This is a six piece brush set that includes six of the Sephora Pro brushes, including the brush 56. And the other brush is the Merit number no. one brush. It's the only brush they have right now. It's a dense synthetic foundation brush. It is cut at an angle. It's short, so it's easy to kind of hold and manipulate and I used it to apply my base today. It's great for concealer, it's great for foundation, it just blends really evenly. All right, let's get into skincare. I have some of these products with me, some of them I don't have in front of me, so I'll include photos of them. Let's talk about cleansers. There are two cleansing balms that I love from Sephora. One of them is the Paula's Choice Cleansing Balm. I love this for sensitive skin, for all skin types, because it comes in a tube. There's no fragrance, there's no essential oil, it emulsifies beautifully, it breaks down makeup and SPF, and it rinses clean. The other one is the Youth to the People Cleansing Balm, which I don't have in front of me, I recently emptied. That one is a bit more experiential. It kind of starts out the texture of like hard butter, it's a little bit harder to scrape out, but then it melts down into this beautiful oil. It smells amazing. It smells like their dream line, if you've ever tried that. And it also melts down makeup and SPF beautifully, rinses clean, and leaves the skin feeling nice and hydrated and ready for whatever comes next. For a second cleanse, I also love the Youth to the People Gel Cleanser, their Superfoods Cleanser, but my newest cleanser love is the Skin Fix Barrier Plus Foaming Oil Cleanser. This is such a unique texture. It actually is kind of more of a milky cleanser than what I would think of as an oil. It comes out as like a white cream, and then when you work it into the face, it foams up slightly, ever so slightly, but not what you think of as like an old school foaming cleanser. I actually think this would be a great cleanser for dry skins especially. Um, as well as all skin types, but because it has that creamy quality, I know a lot of dry skin folks look for that in a cleanser. It has this really nice way of moisturizing the skin as it's cleansing, but it doesn't leave behind a film or anything. For mists and hydrators, I have the Sikapair, the Dr. Jart Sikapair Tiger Grass Calming Mist. The Sikapair line is great if you have sensitive skin. This has the finest mist you will ever see and it smells really refreshing. It's a great hydrating step between skincare. It's also great for makeup if you have dry skin and you want a couple of extra layers of hydration to pack in there. Another hydrating layer that I love is the Sorwasu First Care Activating Serum. This is an iconic formula. If you're gonna try something from Sorwasu, I think this is a great place to start. It is a luxury skincare brand, so that savings will go a long way. This is designed to be used as the first step after cleansing. It basically restores hydration, it adds some plumpness back into the skin, and it helps prepare your skin to receive, to better receive any of the other skincare steps that you are applying after it. Sorazu is also built around like Korean hanbang or herbal medicine. So it uses ginseng, it uses an herbal blend, so you do get that kind of sensorial quality to the skincare and it's just a beautiful product. Then I've got a few new hydrating serums in my life. The first one is the Youth to the People Triple Peptide Cactus Oasis Serum. So this includes hyaluronic acid as well as a blend of peptides that help with anti-aging. It's a very watery, fluid, but richly hydrating texture. I used it today for skin prep. Because it is so fluid, it makes a great skincare layering step, and I do find that it sort of plumps up my skin, and it's something that I can wear in the morning or in the evening. I've also got the Summer Fridays Dream Oasis Deep Hydration Serum. So this is actually more of a light gel cream texture. 
The Youth to the People serum is fluid and watery. This one is a little bit more jelly-like and creamy. And I think in the summer, I'm actually going to be able to use this as my moisturizing step because it is that deeply moisturizing and kind of pillowy on the skin. I think if you have dry skin, you'll really, really love this, especially because it has that richer texture. I've also really been loving the Sorazu Concentrated Ginseng Renewing Serum. This is more of like a gel-like texture. So it looks like that. It has a really strong ginseng scent, so definitely be aware of that. It has that herbal scent that for me is very, it's very nostalgic. It reminds me of my mom and my grandma. This blends out like a dream. It just soaks into the skin and I do feel like my, my skin overall looks more even and feels stronger. Like tighter and plumper when I use this. For vitamin C's, there are actually two that I love, both of which I've emptied recently. The first one is the Paula's Choice C15 Super Booster. It's 15% L-ascorbic acid. It's the most potent form of vitamin C you'll get. And I find it does a great job of brightening pigmentation. If your skin can't handle the strength of L-ascorbic acid, the Summer Fridays CC Me Vitamin C Serum is also beautiful. You get the antioxidant protection of the L-ascorbic acid. You do get that skin brightening quality, but it's not as intense as L-ascorbic acid. They use a vitamin C derivative. So if you have more sensitive skin that can't tolerate other vitamin Cs, that might be a good option for you. Then getting into actives, I have a new active that I really like. So this is the Rose Ink Skin Resolution Clarifying Toner. It's something that you kind of want to mix up and you know, anytime there have been so many active releases from skincare brands that I get a little nervous to try them because I use tretinoin and so I always want to be careful with my skin barrier. This has a blend of different acids. It has, I think, salicylic, lactic, glycolic, I think mandelic. Even though it is a blend of acids, it's actually very gentle on the skin while being super effective. So sometimes, so if I'm feeling like maybe I don't wanna go in with something super intense, but I kind of need an all rounder in terms of resurfacing or brightening, this has been a really nice option and it's really well formulated. I think as an all rounder, it's not going to wreck the skin barrier and it's very well balanced in terms of the blend of acids. For me as an oily, skin gal going into the warmer months, I have to be armed with the Paula's Choice 2% BHA salicylic acid. This is something that I've used for like over 10 years to manage breakouts and acne. It helps clear out the pores. It helps the, it helps reduce the appearance of pores. And it also helps me with skin texture. Salicylic acid actually gets into your pores deeper than AHAs. And so it is oil soluble. So this is what you want to turn to, to manage the oil production in your skin. And if you want something kind of more hardcore, I always have the Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Peel Pads. These are the extra strength ones. So these are two pre-soaked pads. The first one has the exfoliating peel and the second one neutralizes it. So you do the first one, wait a couple minutes, then neutralize it with the second peel. I wouldn't use this more than once a week, but when I do use these, I wake up with super smooth skin, super glowy skin. Any texture that I've had is just gone. It's hardcore, but it's amazing. And then if you're looking for a retinoid, I would go to Paula's Choice. The Paula's Choice 1% retinol especially is a very, very good option. For eye creams, I've recently opened the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Eye Rescue, and I really like this. It has this really nice emollients to the formula. It also contains a bit of retinol to aid with anti-aging. And if I just use a little bit under the eyes, it's great for daytime as well. Moving into moisturizers, I have something new to me. This is the Skin Fix Barrier Plus Skin Barrier Restoring Gel Cream. It's a gel cream that comes in an airless pump, but what's really unique to me about this is that it's probably the most one of the most hydrating gel creams I've ever tried. It has this like bounciness that stays with the skin throughout the day. It's not like a water cream where it has that water burst feel and then it kind of goes away or evaporates. It gives you a deep 
moisture and hydration that stays with you throughout the day. So much so that I think even normal or even dry skin types might really like this. It gives you a really elastic feel on the skin. For normal to dry skins or for even oily skins at night, which is how I use this, I have the Pharmacy Honey Halo. This is a beautiful, deeply moisturizing lotion cream texture. It smells like honey, it contains honey, and I've gone through several jars of this in my life and it's something that I continue to keep on hand. And then new to me in the night mask category is the Fresh Floral Recovery Calming Mask. This is designed to soothe redness, to calm the skin. I find that this is really soothing, I agree, and it has this kind of cooling quality on the skin. It's the most lightly scented skincare product I've tried from Fresh. That's like a leave-on skincare product. I'm going to include this in the moisture category. This is the La Mer Hydrating Infused Emulsion. I know it's La Mer, it's very expensive, but it is so beautiful. It's basically like a, a liquid lotion. That's what an emulsion is, it's like oil as well as hydrating ingredients. It looks like this, and um, I can use this, honestly, as my moisturizer. If you have dry skin, I think it's a great moisturizing step underneath your moisturizer, but it really packs the moisture in there. There is that emollients, that richness, and it is La Mer. It has that like signature powdery floral smell. I actually like it. It's something that's really grown on me, and I think this is a beautiful, beautiful skincare step. For face sunscreens, I have a couple different recommendations. I prefer chemical SPFs because I don't want to mess with any white cast. I just find the textures to be much more elegant. I love the Paula's Choice Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid SPF 50. This is a very lightweight texture. It has a super fluid quality to it. And if you have oily to normal skin, I think you'll really like this because it's super lightweight. It absorbs really quickly and it doesn't really feel like you have anything on the skin, but it gives you great sun protection. I would also suggest the Dr. Jart Every Sunday Sun Fluid. This is a broad spectrum SPF 50 plus. This has a slightly more lotiony texture, but it is also very lightweight and absorbs really quickly. So this is the texture of that. It's a little bit more creamy and like lotiony than the Paula's Choice, but both of them are honestly very, very lightweight and sink in super quickly. For body SPF, I love the Super Goop Glow Oil. This is more of like your pool day SPF. I actually love this for touch-ups. This is the old packaging, but it's a similar concept where you spray it on and it's a dry oil. It's an SPF 50, so you get high coverage and it's also water resistant. So this is great for me when I have a base layer of sunscreen on and maybe I'm at the pool, I'm at the beach, and I wanna to top up. It just makes you feel a little bit sexy and shiny like you're on the cover of a magazine, but you're also getting sun protection. As for lip balms, like skincare lip balms and not makeup lip balms, I love all of the fresh lip balms. This is their stick formula, their original sugar advanced therapy it's a metal tube that's a twist up and this one has like a beautiful lemony scent I also love their potted lip balms I've emptied several of those in my life and they come in really delicious scents like mango and watermelon and I'm currently using their night lip sleeping mask their sugar advanced therapy recovery lip mask so basically this is the mask version of this it has that lemony fresh scent. This is a really nice lip sleeping mask. It's really um, thick, it's rich, and it sticks around. It lasts all night long and it's deeply, deeply moisturizing. My all-time favorite lip sleeping mask is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, which I've recently emptied, tragedy, but it's my favorite one. I've gone through, honestly, probably more than a dozen jars of that in my life. It's just something that's like a constant in my life, and I'm going to repurchase it in my favorite scent, which is vanilla. And then for skincare devices, I've been really committed to my new face lately, and I love it. 
I have found a new appreciation for it. So this is a microcurrent device. It helps lift and sculpt and tone different areas of your face. I especially love it for contouring the cheekbone, the jawline, and lifting above the brow. I have the Trinity, which has removable heads, so you can get the different attachments that target different areas of the face. I think this is about $325. You can also get bundles, but that savings that you can get does go a long way, especially with a skincare device. This is the kind of thing that you only want to invest in if you're going to use it regularly. Otherwise, it won't do much for you, but if you do use it regularly, I think you can really see a difference in the way that your face looks in terms of like sculpting, contour, lift, all of that. If you're under 30, you don't need this. I'm 31, so I'm starting to be a little bit more diligent in my upkeep at home. For body care, I have to be really honest, there's one brand that has taken over my body care life and it's necessary. I love the body serum. It's a great lightweight hydrating step if you especially if you don't like the feeling of body lotions. I also love their body lotion. It is lightweight, but deeply moisturizing. When I feel like I need to amp it up, I add a bit of the necessary body oil, either into the serum or the body lotion, or any other body lotion, honestly, that feels like it just needs a little extra oomph. This is perfect for that. And this bottle has lasted me forever. It's 3.4 ounces, and all of their like leave-on body products are fragrance-free. I also love the body washes. They're pH balanced. They don't dry out my skin. I love the fragrance free one, but my favorite scent is eucalyptus. It's just super fresh. It creates that spa-like atmosphere. There is one competitor in the body care category, which is the Josie Marin Intensive Daily Repair Body Butter. So this is designed for eczema relief with argan oil and colloidal oatmeal. It comes in this beautiful, heavy glass jar, and this is what the body butter looks like. If you've ever tried the Josie Marin body butters, they are rich, but they're not stiff. They spread really nicely, and they're emollient, but they're not greasy. This, because it's designed with sensitive skins in mind, has no fragrance and it really protects and strengthens the skin barrier. I always use this on my neck and chest area, which is where I'm eczema prone, and I haven't had any irritation since using this. Oh, and I also love the Necessaire hand cream. I'm almost out. It's fragrance-free, but it's really moisturizing, but it absorbs quickly. It doesn't leave any like tackiness behind, so I can go right back to driving or writing or typing on the computer without feeling like I'm getting lotion residue everywhere. Let's talk hair. This is K18, and it's the biggest change I've had in my hair care routine in years. So if you're not familiar, this is essentially a bond repair treatment. It helps to repair damaged hair. It helps to create um, softer, silkier hair for me. And especially if you have color treated or bleached hair, it's going to make a big difference. The weird thing about this is that you are supposed to skip conditioner when you use this, which I hated. I hated the idea of doing that at first. And for the first five times you wash your hair using this, you're supposed to skip conditioner basically to get your hair used to this. But then something magical happens and suddenly my hair is more touchable, it's softer, it's flexible, it's movable, and it does feel like repair is happening and it's very expensive but they actually carry this in a mini if you're curious to try it and you only need one or two pumps even if you have long hair like me even though i hated the idea of skipping conditioner at first it actually makes hair wash day so much shorter and once you get past the first five uses you can basically bring this in like once a week or so or every other wash for maintenance. Of course, there are other wash products that I'm loving right now. I really love the Christophe Roban Salt Scrub. That's the most purifying, intense scalp scrub that I can recommend. I love it for when I have a lot of product buildup on the scalp. I also love the Brio Geo Charcoal micro scrub shampoo. That one is the gentler version of a scalp scrub. It's like a creamy scalp scrub and it's very cooling, has a bit of peppermint. And I love the Brio Geo Don't 
to spare repair hair mask. That's one of my all time favorites as well. If you're looking for detangling, I think Amika's Soul Food is the best detangling hair mask that I've ever tried. It gives you a lot of slip to work through any knots or tangles in the hair. For leave-in products, I love the Pureology Color Fanatic Spray for protecting my hair color, for detangling, and as my leave-in conditioner. And then for heat protection, I really like the Gisu Propolis Infused Heat Protecting Spray. It's just really lightweight. It doesn't add any texture to the hair, but it also protects it from heat damage. And then for protecting the ends of my hair or adding a bit of moisture, I really like the Orbe Power Drops. It's like a hair serum that adds a bit of moisture to the ends without adding any heaviness. But if I need something a little bit more heavy duty, I love the Gisu Original Honey Infused Hair Oil for adding back shine and for adding back um, some touchability and softness to the ends of the hair if they're feeling brittle especially. My favorite dry shampoo is the newer Living Proof Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo. This is like the next generation of their original Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo, which was my favorite, but this one works even better. It's like a more amped up potent version of that. It just makes your hair both look and feel clean. For hair styling, my favorite and most used hair tool is my T3 Twirl Trio. This is the one with the clamp and the convertible barrels. So you get three different size barrels and you can switch them out. It's just the most seamless, beautiful, quickly heating, evenly heating curling iron I've ever used. The Whirl is the version of this without the clamp, so it's just the wand if that's what you prefer, but I honestly think all of the T3 tools are incredible and beautifully designed. I used it today to get this kind of like loose wave that's just what I go to, it's super fast. And then I give a spritz of the Orbe dry texture spray throughout to create a bit of volume and body and that kind of more casual beachy look. And the last hair thing that I cannot ever be without is my Aquas hair turban. This is this was a limited edition version. I don't know if it's available, but I'll link all of them below. It is something that you apply to wet hair. You can button it to the back of your head. And this just speeds up hair drying time twofold for me. It's something I really can't be without, especially as someone with long hair. So closing out with personal fragrance and home fragrance, there's a new fragrance in my life that I really love. It's the Nest Golden Nectar Perfume. It's floral and gourmand at the same time. It has like a vanilla-y base, but it also has notes of orchid and it's got the warmth of amber. It's just the kind of fragrance that I think you can wear anywhere, anytime, and it won't be offensive to anybody and it becomes like creamier and softer on the dry down throughout the day. It's just a really lovely addition to the Nest perfume line. The other Nest perfume that I love is actually a perfume oil. If you like citrus, like bright, juicy citruses, this one is the one for you, and I'm so excited I can wear it again. I mean, you can wear it any time of year, but especially in the warmer months. So it's a perfume oil with a dropper. Seville orange really smells like a real orange. It has that tartness, that brightness, that juice and it immediately transports me to like a tropical vacation. On my wish list, because I like those bright perfumes, I would really like to try the Tom Ford Mandarino Diamalfi. That's been on my list to try forever. It has notes of mandarin, basil, and shiso leaf accord, which I'm like, yes, sign me up. I think if you are looking to try a new perfume, that's also a category where you see a big difference with the savings event. So just something to note if you've had your eye on a perfume, because perfumes are expensive. I've curated just two candles to round out this video. You know I love my candles, so this was hard to do, but this is what I'm excited to light in these coming months. So the first one that I have is a very expensive bougie candle. It's the Overose candle, and I have the Valkyria scent. So the Overose candles look like this. It's that matte, beautiful, pink, weighty vessel, sleek, minimal branding. They have the pink wax. This one smells so good. So this one has notes of fig leaves, vineyard peaches, cocoa milk, and cedar wood. It says it smells like summer, but better. Wild orchard sensation with green leaves, ripe milky coconut aroma, and velvety peaches warmed up with the sappy woody twig and bark. It really smells 
like summer, like a late afternoon in summer. You're like laying beneath a tree. You've had a long day out. You're relaxed. You've got that creamy coconut, but like peachy as well. It's so, so beautiful. It's a very unique scent. I don't think I've ever smelled another candle that smells quite like this. The other one I've picked out is a Nest candle. This is Nest Sicilian Tangerine. You know I love the Nest fragrances. The Nest candles especially just fill a room. They're so potent. And Sicilian Tangerine just smells like a Sicilian dream. It has that very citrus forward scent. It's juicy, it's tart, it's sweet, but not in a sickly way, just in a really fruity, fresh way. And I'm like, yeah, that's, I wanna be in Sicily eating a Sicilian tangerine. That's what I want. So this is transporting me to like a summer vacation. I can't believe I'm saying this, but that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Happy shopping. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will try to answer them as quickly as I can. And of course, I would love for you to subscribe and hang out with me even more. If you did actually make it through this entire video, let me know in the comments because you are an actual champ and I love you for that. I would also love for you to comment and let me know what you've got your eye on for the Sephora Spring Savings event. Thank you again to Sephora for partnering with me on this video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!